meter. Now the way I dealt with this in the video uh, by doing that lab is I basically put this on a copier and made it make sure I could actually take a picture of this and then I expanded it as much as possible and then just measured the distance between the two black tapes here, two bits of black tape. And then with the expanded, I could actually count and make marks on the, on the photocopy. Because that's a whole lot easier than counting by fingernail. Right. Now let's take a look at our two loop equations. Oh, questions before we take a look at the two loop equations. On the lab, are we going to have to do that? Like count the wires yes. in the solenoid? Okay. Can't wait. I know. <laughs> Good time. At, at least if you, the, the red ones are the same ones that are used in the video, so there's some still shots there, uh, which presumably you could take a screenshot, print it out, and do counting that way. Or just count using your fingernails. Or someone who's really good at eyesight. Other questions at the moment? So if I have a single loop, one loop, with current flowing through around it, the magnetic field in the middle with mu naught i over 2r. If I have two loops, well, if one loop is giving me that magnetic field, two of them, that's so close to each other, two loops would just be 2 times mu naught i over 2r. And up to a certain point, if I have n loops, this is big N, mu naught i, over 2r. If, let's be very specific here, n isn't too big. If n becomes large enough, suddenly we're dealing with a solenoid, and this equation is more appropriate. So again, being just as specific, if n is large enough, the magnetic field is equal to mu naught, lowercase n times i. So the downside is it's not really specific about what point you transition from one to the other. The upside is that you're not necessarily expected to be able to figure out that transition. I'm not gonna give you the gray area of, my oh gosh, which one is this? It's either a solenoid, or I'll give you information that the length of it is considerably larger than the diameter of it. Or I'm gonna give you a couple of loops here at best. Just to clarify, this equation here is just the magnitude of the magnetic field because you have not included the direction, the vector symbol. Is that true for these as well? It's just that D without the vector symbol? Correct. It's just the magnitude. But you would find the direction. It's almost a default answer at this point, using the right-hand rule. If current's flowing around like that, my magnetic field's coming out. On this one up here, my magnetic field was going around this way. The current's flowing to that way. Sorry. That was badly worded. Current's flowing around like this, magnetic field's flowing that way. Also badly worded. Magnetic field is going that way. It doesn't really flow. Would it be incorrect to write this equation and then write the direction after it because the vector, I, I'm just hung up on there not being a vector. Okay. Because you usually prefer that. Yeah, in terms of uh, the mechanics of, you know, you're on a, doing an assessment, uh, do them independently. Figure out what the direction of the magnetic field is going to be, and then figure out the magnitude. Fair enough. Or go back to the calculus and drive it off, derive it off from there. I might pass on that. All right, I thought you might. 
So if I have a solenoid here, and again, current's going in on top and out on the bottom, my magnetic field would be pointing to the right. Okay, for the typical stunning visual effect, magnetic field. Well, I've created an electromagnet. And this would be the north of the magnet, and that would be the south. So you can pull out a sensor, which measures the direction, uh, which measures magnetic field, and confirm that. Do you have a question, Anna? You have the furrowed brow. Just a furrowed brow. Okay. That's her resting face. <laughs> Did anyone besides Anna have a question? I guess my one question that came up was this one with two loops thing. You drew the two loops as if they were sort of stacked on top of each other, yes. as opposed to next to each other, which is how we're depicting it here. Well, it, it's a matter of when I'm drawing a loop, it's generally easiest to look at it from this end view. Well, that, yeah, I see, that's the whole loop here. And this that's one right here, is we're looking at it from that point of view. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, I've never really quite drawn a solenoid by no. that. Clearly a solenoid with, just count the loops. Other questions? Something fell. I didn't see what it was. Anything I need to be? I'm guessing it was nothing important. Okay, one more question about the drawing. Okay. So in the middle of these, this cross section of pieces of wire, you put a single dot indicating that the current is coming out of the board. Correct. And in the middle of this single loop, you've drawn a dot, which indicates the magnetic field. The direction of the magnetic field. Actually, when I did that dot, it was probably, I was identifying the center, but it is coming out. And, and it's the magnetic field, whereas in this one, you're indicating the current. Yes. Okay. Yep, context. Right. Now, because all of it is clear, let's just add to just the joy of mixed conventions. I don't like where this is going. Earth. Earth has a magnetic field. That's not a shock. What creates the Earth's magnetic field? the two poles. <laughs> well, I think there's a chicken and egg argument there. Um, <laughs> the core. What about it? Having a, a lot of things have cores without having a magnetic field. Yes, it's molten metal. Keep going. It's uh, hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's let's run with that one. Then, uh, what does heat do? If I got it, if I have a material and it's hot besides melting. It expands. Okay. Most of them do. Probably at that temperature all of them do. I know there are a couple of those like uh, six or so materials that will contract when heated. <coughs> to a certain extent. Energy is being released. In what way? way. Um, Exothermic? Reaction, sure. 
I don't know if it's ectothermic or not. I know it's hot already. Uh, yeah. I'm not exactly sure what caused the hot to begin with. It could be just the uh, radon. I mean, that's what radon tends to keep the Earth in a relatively steady temperature. I feel, like, I feel like we're running with this, but I also feel like you're going to be like, no, you guys are wrong. Like, this is how it works. <laughs> oh, that's going to be the attitude. He was <laughs> <laughs> looking for a loop. He wasn't finding it. I'm going to say it has something to do with the magnetic field. Yes, it has something to do with the magnetic yeah, field. Okay. Good to know, good to know. What creates a magnetic field? And please don't say magnet. <laughs> we actually have gone over this part of how you create a magnetic field. Like I remember. Matter of fact, we just talked about creating magnetic fields. Okay, so it has to do with current. Ah, what creates a current? The movement of electrons. Uh, okay, or charge, in general. Charge. Moving okay. Charge. Yeah. All right. So movement. There has to be a moving charge in order for there to be a magnetic field. So, what does that tell you about the Earth's core besides being hot? It's charged. There's a movement of charge. Okay. <laughs> sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what happens? If you've got an atom. The, the typical atom is. You've got a nucleus with a bunch of electrons flowing around it. As you get more and more energy thrown into it, eventually the electrons can no longer stay attached to the nucleus, and the electrons now are free. So we have what are called disassociated atoms. We have the, the core, which is positive. We have the electrons, which are negative. And that's how we now have all these charges that are sort of independent of each other that ultimately start swirling in some manner to create the magnetic field. So, I get a magnet, or I get a compass, and the compass points that way. Is that the north end of the compass or the south end of the compass? The compass is usually point towards the north. Are you pointing to the, the arrow or to the... I'm right. pointing to the arrow. That's, this is my compass right here. Right. It's pointing that way. Yeah, so the question is... Is that the north end of the compass or the south end? Oh, that's right. Um, Anna's comment was slightly off of what I was asking. I would assume it's the north. Yeah, that, that's the north end. So this is a tiny little magnet here with a north end and a south end. So if this is the north end of the magnet, what is this? The North Pole. So north, two norths attract each other? No, it's the south. Oh. south pole. So we've got this this strange language bit, yet one more, where our North Pole is actually the South Pole of the magnet. The magnetic South Pole. But, but we call it the North Pole. We call it the North Pole. Matter of fact, there's a spot up here which we'll call the magnetic North Pole. <laughs> but it's really the South Pole of the magnet. Okay. Uh, it's confusing. <laughs> Language is great. Why don't we just change the compass? Yeah. Why the, rather than the poles? Yeah, can't you just make south it north and north south? <laughs> yeah, uh, I suspect it was all created independently of each other, and then when they found out what was going on, they said, "We're not going to change it. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to call this the North Pole, even though physics, from a physics point of view, it's really a South Pole. But you know, that's just a small, tiny group, and we don't care about them." I think that's how the conversation went among the powers. So, no problem. so what's the magnetic North Pole? What is at the top? Like, yeah, it's down there, but you said that there was one up top, too. Oh, sorry. Ge from a geographic point of view, magnetic North Pole is that basically where the magnetic field, basically, I'd say, would be the strongest. Which is the exact point that we call colloquially the South Pole. Like, they are not different. Right. Wait. The magnetic North Pole and the South Pole. The mag. All right. So there's the there's the North Pole, which is where the axis is, and then the magnetic North Pole, which is just a little bit off of that. Oh. And then there, which is all really just that the magnetic North Pole up here is just really the strongest spot for the South Pole of the magnet that the Earth's creating. Okay. So the axis is different. 
Yeah. Yeah. And there's and there's speculation that that well, I mean, there's scientific evidence to support the fact that the magnetic north and south pole have actually switched sometime within the lifetime of the Earth. Not of humans. No. Never mind. No, we'll not. no. Why? <laughs> Why? How does it even switch? Uh, where does it switch? You got a bunch of stuff that's swirling around. It's not like there's. Uh, it's stagnant. Yeah. There's there's a certain chaotic nature to it that at some point it's going to reach a tipping point and suddenly flip going the other direction. Now, suddenly, from a geogra from a geologic point of view, uh, I do not know if that is is that over the course of ten thousand years, in which case that's quick from geology point of view, or is that you know, one day it's just all going to hit that tipping point and go poof. I hope not. Would it do anything like to Earth if oh, that were to happen? I immediately think of there's a lot of like planes, there are a lot of things that sort of are using the magnetic North Pole. Birds also, I believe they use the magnetic. I'm now suddenly blanking whether it just heard that someone speculated or whether that was something they figured out. When they migrate north and migrate south, I was thinking they used, they had some sort of internal something, something. yeah, let's be technical about it. <laughs> An internal something which had a sense of the magnetic fields. So suddenly if they wanted to migrate north, they'd be migrating south? If, yeah, potentially. Or this could be a simple like Y two K thing where everyone gets all worked up and then like it's actually fine for some reason you couldn't predict, maybe. Or perhaps Y two K was fine because people actually did act at some point. Are you saying Y two K was like when it went to like year two thousand? Yeah. Like okay, yeah. I think that there are actually like twenty seven dates within that that are going to we're going to get messed up. <laughs> that on September 9th, nineteen ninety nine. The automatic doors at the building where I was working wouldn't work because somewhere in the code they were looking for that September 9th, 1999. Anyway, where was I going next? I think uh, I was trying to confuse you with that, and then all right, I think now I'm going to say that I'm done with chapter. 22. Nope. Well, so we've done 30 and 22 at this point. Did I call it chapter 30 earlier? Yeah. yeah. I remember it being like 30. Yeah. Yeah. No, sorry. <laughs> 252, chapter 30 is the magnet is when they start magnetism. Your book, 22. Okay. So if I just go back wherever I said 30 and just sort of substitute 22 in your head. I think I wrote in here like so much chapters. Yeah, me too. <laughs> okay, now I <laughs> I need one of those. I've had this dream of writing a book that would work for any level. And just that, you know, you have like five sections for each chapter. So, you know, the, the beginning group would just use section one. And then the more advanced you are, the more sections you would cover for each chapter. There was a book on general relativity done that way, where you could read just the, you know, you could read half the book and be fine, because it all built on just that half of the book, or you can go into more depth and read the both sections for each chapter. This will do. All right, so today is Friday. Oh, it's like I'm leaving it. I'm leaving it. All right, so looking at it. My friend's birthday is on Pi Day. I wish him the ultimate happy birthday, Pi Day, in 2015. Aww, because the next couple of days. Oh, wait, is, is it April 1st? 5. Aww, well, that's cute. Well, he should start to whatever. My birthday's on Friday. Here we are. Second thing. No. Yeah. Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> Man, Brooke, you dropped that bomb. <laughs> when you were like, I have a friend with a birthday on Friday, I was like, don't say it. Don't <laughs> say it. Don't 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 say it.
You know, you went there. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, I would say that next Monday, we should do a quiz on chapter 22. And 30 if you want, but 22. Well, I'm good. I'm really no calculus here. No calculus here. Yeah, we'll, we'll here. No. Yeah, you can call it if you want. <laughs> All right, so homework quiz 22. And master set do Friday of next week? Are we going to have a test the following week? Um, yeah. Okay. So how, just, just as a ballpark, how many more chapters are we working through in this course? Because I have to 15. See. We got time. Uh, 22, 23, 24, 28. I think it's so 23 is electromagnetic induction, 24 is the Basically, do like half of twenty-four. So we have how many more in there? The multiple choice thing you did the first day, and then the is that kind of like a cumulative kind of thing? Because that was, was kind of whatever everything, right? Yeah, pretty much. That covers everything through twenty-four. That's the last one, probably. The twenty-eight will be the last one. So we cover that on the last So one. the multiple choice test does not cover the stuff that's in chapter 28. Okay. But we will do chapter 28. Because relativity is just really cool and mind bending. All right. So I think we've got uh, sort of a course uh, path forward here for at least chapter 22 before we start on chapter 23. So is spring break next week? Yes. No, tomorrow. spring break starts tomorrow. Okay, because I thought that, but then I saw written up there, it's 22 and 24, so I just didn't know. Are there written down? Quiz next Friday. Oh, oh, I guess that was, okay, okay. I guess that was for this week. I mean, you see at the bottom one, it says spring break, and then it says 322. Oh, 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 oh. But yeah, that's, I understand. That's 252. Okay, gotcha. Did you say quiz next Friday? Next Monday. Yeah. Okay. okay. It's like, oh, and, then, and we have class on Friday, so 